lot of times these guys will make these welding videos that they'll show how pretty their wells are and their little TIG and all this stuff. Oh, that's not me, man. I'm, <clears throat> I'm trying to show you how to make a really good living and encourage you to run at it like a bull because we need tradesmen. And we're going into an environment now that tradesmen are hard to come by and ones that show up with a good attitude are even more hard to come by. And there's room, there's room out here for some good people. Um, hey guys, we're about to weld this piece of pipe to this flange. You've seen me do it before, but this time it is extremely windy out here. And wind and a 7018 usually don't go together. It will give you porosity. A few things to give you porosity, grease on your rod or oil, wind, mud, just about any contaminants will jump in 7018. And you'll have little bubbles in your weld and they'll call you x-ray on you and then you look like an idiot because <laughs> it sucks having repairs, but they do happen. You put the bead in this pipe. While I do it, I'm gonna talk to you, try to. <clears throat> so, the point of me doing all these videos and trying to show people how to weld if they want to is because I really think having a trade is probably the best thing that ever happened to me in my journey of making money is when you have a trade, you won't go hungry. And it doesn't matter if you're an electrician, plumber, carpenter, whatever. I picked welding because it made the most money and I was good at it. Um, and it's been really good to me. And I met a couple, it reminds me, I met a couple in Dallas. They had a son that reminded me of myself. I didn't meet him, he wasn't there, but they painted a pretty good picture of what he was like and reminded me of myself. His name was Gage. And Gage didn't like school. Well, I didn't either, to say the least. Because I knew I was never... I turned down a little bit. I was never going to diagram sentences and do all that other stuff that they want you to do. And, you know, I'm not saying don't finish school. You need to finish school. You have got, you, you, you need that uh, high school diploma. And hopefully your school offers welding or, you know, any kind of trade school. It really kind of saved me. I went from I went from being a CD student to graduating on the honor roll. I'm good with my hands. Sometimes, you know, we're not good at memorizing the right answer. What is it? Yeah, that's fine. Jose, Jose's wanting to video the inside of the pipe. Um, yeah, so if you can't memorize the right answer and I wasn't very good at reading because I'm dyslexic. I can read fine, but, you know, it's like work. I, when you'll never catch me sitting down to read a book. It turned up a little bit. <clears throat> You're not going to do it trading your time for money. You're not going to be able to have passive income. That's what it's all about is cash flow. Before I get to talking about that, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button because I am going to give a welding tip in this video. So it's really windy out here. And you'll see how this is low. And I'm, going to, I'm not going to be up here where the wind can get to me. I'm going to be down in here and I'm only going to come to about right there and then I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to let it pile up on this side and I'm going to let it pile up on this side. Try to keep it low and flat. The flatter you keep it, the less problems you're going to have. Because like I said, wind in 7018 is a bummer. So, if you can make a decent living doing whatever trade you're doing. You hey, sorry for the bad audio, but I want to push this home. If you can have a trade and a skill, you can trade that your time, your valuable time because of this skill you have for a good amount of currency. <clears throat> and you can save 30, 40, or possibly even 50% of that. And you can invest that into rental properties, gold and silver, whatever you want, 
Use your head. I mean, don't do what I do. You do you. And they will pay for your lifestyle. Those are called assets. Now, the things most people buy, the normies, they buy liabilities. Trucks, boats, you know, side-by-sides. These things that cost a lot of money that take money out of your pocket for insurance and, you know, upkeep and maintenance and all these things. That's how you stay poor. I know I'm getting into somebody's butt right now, but I don't care because I wish somebody, when I was 20 years old, would have grabbed me by the throat and said, hey, don't buy stupid stuff. See how that's flat? See how it's nice and flat? It's a little above flush. It's all you want. Anything above flush is good. Is that pay you to own them and you don't have to trade your time for money more. My phone goes off every now and then it goes, bing, somebody paid you this. Bing, somebody paid you $1,000. Bing, somebody paid you twelve. dollars You've got to get into that. Remember that. I want to drive that home. Buy things that pay you to own them. I'm going to finish welding this pot, and I'm going to turn the camera back on while I have something else to say. <laughs> Later.